Hey guys, it's Twitter One Maxwell here, and welcome to another edition of the TW WWE updates. As you know, after Fastlane last week, we are now on the road to WrestleMania. So, as promised, we're going to do our best to try and do five solid weeks of Raws and Smackdowns before we get to WrestleMania, giving proper storylines behind them. Uh, just a really one off exception here, just because of the magnitude of WrestleMania 205 Live. I'll just pick that as normal, and yeah, there will be a match for that at WrestleMania as well. So hopefully, you know, we can get some good matches built, we can get some good storylines that people are interested in. And without blathering on too much, let's we'll start our 20-segment show taking up, surprisingly for me, the hours. Wow, I've actually made a show that's actually within time. It is a miracle. But here we go, this is Monday Night Raw. So we are sold out in Washington DC at the DC Armory and we start the show with the WWE Champion Daniel Bryan. Bryan says it feels good to know that I'm going into Wrestlemania as the WWE Champion. A dream has come true here and it will feel even better when I walk out of Wrestlemania as the champ. Now of course any match takes two to tango and what a historic moment it's going to be when my good friend John Cena has an opportunity to become the record 17 time champion. John Cena interrupts, so he does come to the ring just to get involved in this promo. He says, pardon the, the interruption, Dan, my good man, but you're right, five weeks at WrestleMania, we're friends just now, but history is on the line, and I want to cement my legacy as the greatest ever, showing that if you never give up, if you rise above hate, you can achieve anything. It's nothing personal, it's just on that night, it will be my night. So A91 promo to start the show starts the storyline between uh, Cena and Brian called Run for History. John Cena was good. Daniel Bryan came out of it looking excellent, and yeah, the crowd got the show off to a strong start, and we're hot. So a good opening segment there. Not turning Daniel Bryan just yet, but we know where it's going. Brian and Cena are then interrupted by Euro Trash's members Marty Scurll and Zack Saber Jr. Saber Jr. takes the majority of the promo. He says, what is this love fest all about? I mean, it's a joke. You bloody Americans get everything. Where's my title shot? Where's Marty's? You know, Cena, you just got lucky at the last pay-per-view fast lane, and I'm not ending this on a loss. If you think you're truly the greatest, then tonight, you two pricks versus us. If we win, that little title match at WrestleMania becomes a fatal four-way with us included. Cena says, I've been doing this a long, long time. You're just another bunch of punks wanting to make a name off of John Cena. Do you know what? You two are on. Us two, be you two tonight. The crowd cheers, great main event matchup. But however, Brian looks a little myth to why John Cena would accept such a match. So A89 promo there, Cena doing well Without a script, the same with Sabre Jr. and Skrull. Uh, crowd hotter again, and a couple of good ratings there. Cena happy, Brian excellent, and Sabre Jr. as well. And the storyline gains some heat. So that's always a good start. Two negatives as to be expected. Can we progress to the next bit? There we go. So our first matchup was in the women's division. It was about to have decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat, and it saw the talented Rhea Ripley defeat Chris Wolf in 8-19 with Soul Food. C plus 69, good opening match, continues the rise of Rhea Ripley, both ladies with a 61 performance. No skill improvements, but yeah, all positives there, and a good one for someone that's more going to get a push after WrestleMania. Next up, we see Kevin Owens backstage. And he heads into the dressing room of his friends, the tag team The Revival. If you remember, we had a faction with Revival, Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. Kale says, you guys, it's good to see you again. Listen, tonight I've got a bushy in Aries, and I need them out of my life. I can trust you, and you guys can certainly trust me. How about it? Us three, be them too. Let's take them out of the WWE forever. Scott Dawson says, now listen, Kev, we do trust you. And we respect the hell out of you. But we've got a match tonight. We could see us get to WrestleMania to challenge for the world tag titles. 
we've got to take opportunity, that opportunity, so we're going to pass on helping you. They walk out. Kev looks upset and screams, but I need top guys. In reference to Dawson and Wilder saying that they are top guys. But an A90 promo there, KO came across well, also hinting at a face turn in future. So a good promo there. Next up was about they had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. And it saw Braun Strowman defeat Kenny King in 642 with a power slam. A B76 makes Braun look strong. 185 to Kenny 64. Basically showcasing he's still a monster among men. After the matchup, Braun basically destroys him, grabs a microphone and says, Jeff Hardy, I'm not finished with you. He got nothing but a fluke win at WWE Fastlane. Never mind WrestleMania. Next week, I'm going to dismantle you so you cannot walk again. And then he just says, I'll see you next week on Monday Night Raw. And then just does his big roar. So an A94 promo from Braun Strowman. Jeff Hardy vs Braun Strowman is going to happen next week. So that's perfectly fine. And yeah, that's going to be a conclude, conclusion to their rivalry next week on Raw. Next up, we had the Shane Tag Team Championships on the line. There was a decent matchup that saw the team of Abby Leif and Melissa from the Sisterhood defeating AJ Lee and Bailey in 930 when Abby Leif defeated Bailey with the palm strike. It's the first defense of the women's Shine Tag titles. Melissa carried the match in terms of a ring performance, her 78, far surpassing everyone else's, but a decent B-76. AJ Lee improving in rumble skills, and a few negatives there, we expected. Next up, we're backstage with the new WWE World Tag Team Champions after winning the titles of the Rhodes Brothers at the last pay-per-view Fastlane. Ziggler says, so kid, how does it feel once again becoming a champion around here? Pretty damn sweet, huh? Jason Jordan replies with, "You're right. It's good to be back winning again, but not only having these, pre- uh, you know, not only that, but having these pretty sweet tag team title belts as well feels good." Ziggler says, "We'll try not to get too cocky. I know we are that damn good, but we've got teams around here, everywhere, wanting to take these belts and our place at WrestleMania." Ziggler, uh, sorry, Jordan just replies, "Game face is on." I'm ready. So obviously a new tag, tag team champions, of course, just really Jason Jordan, who was in a horrible, horrible losing run. Ziggler took him under his wing. A couple of wins together, win the tag team title belts. And now they just want to make sure they're on the Mania card. They then defend the championship belts. It was a decent matchup that saw Ziggler and Jordan defeat the Rhodes brothers in 10-15 when Jason Jordan defeated Dustin Rhodes by pinfall, making their first defence. In terms of in-ring work, Cody Rhodes was head and shoulders above everyone else. A B78 is good. Rhodes looks through an 82 there. Ziggler with a 71. Dustin, 59 because obviously he's on the way out. Ziggler improving rumble skills. A few negatives there. Be expected. Next up, Kevin Owens is still rushing about frantically looking for a tag team partner for tonight. And he sees the locker room of Samoa Joe. And he heads in. Joe's warming up. He says, Joe, buddy. Pal, I need a massive favour. Joe just looks at him and says, Well, what seems to be the problem, Kevin? It's, it's been a while since I've last seen you. Kevin says, Joe, we go way back. I even helped you become WWE Champion. Now you know firsthand how much of a pain a bushy is. Please, I'm begging you, help me get rid of him. To which, some more Joe says, You know what, Kev? I've got nothing planned tonight. Sure, I'll help you kick his ass. Just for tonight. For old time's sake. Keo just says yes, basically screaming like a little girl. But an A90 promo here. Samoa Joe will team up with Keo to take on Ibushi. And... Here he's. So Samoa Joe came across well. Storyline, as I say, has started this end of a friendship. So I wonder where this is going to go. But yeah, just looking forward to a good programme here. Then had the number one contendership match for the tag titles. Decent matchup saw the revival defeat the Phenomenals, Itami and Ibush, uh, Shibata, sorry, in 12:48 when Wilder defeated Shibata by Yakuza kick. 
Wilder carried the match in terms of in-ring performance, a B-76. It's just because, I say, both Shibata and Itami have declining physical abilities, so put them in a tag team to cover that a little bit. But at the same time, they'll have good matches, put people over. Dawson just can't seem to go over, despite how he always seems to get technical and performance skill increases. Just doesn't get over. And I don't have any plans to split the revival anytime soon. Next up, and about the had some good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. We had Alistair Black defeat Kurt Hawkins in 9.25 with an Awari Death Footstomp. Another B-76. Alyssa Bliss doing some good work at ringside for Kurt Hawkins. Black went 82 to Hawkins 84. Um, Alexa, we're just going to change her to a rich snob gimmick, which has got a great rating. That's good to see. No skill improvements, but again, just building up the momentum of Alistair Black. Alistair Black picks up a good victory over Kurt Hawkins, and that is a fact. Black sits down and sits on the middle of the ring. The crowd cheer. The lights go out, and we hear the signature package for Bray Wyatt. He simply just appears on the Titan Tron and says, Interesting, Alistair. His package then cuts, leaving not only a confused black in the ring, but leaving the crowd very confused as well. So what does this mean? Is Bray Wyatt trying to get in the head of Alistair Black? Is he going to be a future friend of Alistair Black? Are they, is he trying to recruit him? All remains to be seen here, but an A90 and a future heel turn was hinted at by Bray Wyatt in this. So no need to change that just yet. Next up, an extremely short match. Saw Dana Brooke defeat Peyton Royce in 341 with the Simone Driver. C60, basic kind of squash. 48 for Peyton and 91 performance from Dana Brooke. Best in the world at what she does. This was a storytelling match of the day, which is why it got such a low rating. But good win for the champ. After the matchup, she cuts a short promo. She says, Now I've been noticing a certain champion in SmackDown Live. Issuing a challenge to myself, Charlotte, do not make, do not waste my time. I'm the greatest wrestler, women's wrestler on this roster, in this company, and the better champion out of the two of us. State of my business, or you might just get hurt. A90 promo again. Performance of Dana was fantastic. Storyline starts with this segment. So will Charlotte respond on SmackDown? We'll find out during the week. Next up, we're with the Austin Aries. Tonight I team up with my friend the Bushy to take on the two men that I've had an issue with in the past, Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. Now don't get me wrong, they're talented athletes. They're good, but they're not great like me. I mean there's a reason I stand before you, the United States champion, while they are titleist. Double A walks off and heads to gorilla position to head out for his match. Whilst we see Euro Trash walking in the background. But why? A B a B seventy nine here. Aries improvised uh, well during this segment, although it does have a stale gimmick and the US champion. I was kind of hoping we'd get a 90. It's quite disappointing for Austin Aries. Match itself was okay. Exceptional matchup that saw Kota Ibushi and Austin Aries defeat Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe in 2040 when Ibushi defeated KO with a Phoenix Splash. A B plus 85. Given the ratings of the wrestlers, this could have been better but it may have been because of the low storyline heat and this um, Owens again hinting at a face turn the end of the friendship is done a couple of skill improvements there and yep, the lack of hot associated storyline, so we need a bit more heat at the end of the friendship or that's the reason why it's flopped like it did so that could have easily been a, a 90 match we hope our main event does the business just a hype video, hyping up the opening segment and our main event Match tonight, a B plus 86. We really do need this match to draw well, or we are looking at losing pop, which is quite a worry. Does okay, we might still lose a bit of pop, but an exceptional matchup saw John Cena and Daniel Bryan defeat the team of Mary Scurll and Zack Saber Jr. when John Cena defeated Saber Jr. with an A in 23.54. So A90, Cena off his game, uh, Daniel Bryan hinting at a potential heel turn. But 90 for Daniel Bryan, 83 for John Cena, and 97 for Zack Sabre Jr. Phenomenal from him. And a 77 from Marty Scurll. Story in advance, he's gained a bit of heat. A couple of skill improvements there. Overall, a pretty good segment. And we end the show. John Cena and Daniel Bryan pick up the win, with Cena securing the winning fall. 
Cena goes to offer a handshake to Daniel Bryan, who stares at him, and then his facial expressions change a little as he shakes his head to indicate no, no handshake. He walks away holding his WWE Championship. Has this championship added some tension between two friends? Find out next week on Monday Night Raw. So A90, can't argue with that. Fantastic, Cena looked good. Storyline advances. I think we are pulling a little bit of pop here, but overall, it's building up and getting you know the opening kind of bits towards our WrestleMania card. So overall, A9, no specific comments made about the show, so not horrible. Um, any is certainly a positive, but as I said, rather try and get in the 90s to gain pop, try and get to that next level before Mania, just to get a wee bit of a cash boost. But regardless, still happy with it. You say you can get a brief idea of where we're going with storylines and the card. We're trying to put together. So we'll just quickly jump in to the old home screen as we get ready to book SmackDown Live and 205 Live. Let's fill it here. Just a new company giving pay per view and a new champion. Scarita Dorada stays with Triple A. New Japan, I get it all the time, so they don't really sign people, so nothing really much there. 38.30 is good considering we're not even on American television. 5k drug testing. Daniel Bryan doesn't like Jason Jordan. I'm quite surprised at that. I feel like he'd be someone Daniel Bryan would like. Let's look at the European independence. Anyone there that we really recognise? Not overly. Mostly European rather than any of the British ones. I suppose they'd be in the British show. But yeah, um, an okay show. Nothing horrible, nothing spectacular. Um, we were missing a lot of people off that show. We've still storylines to integrate for Rusev, Adam Cole. Um, we've still got, as I say, what's going to happen next for Zack Sabre Jr. You know, where are these guys going to go? Apollo Crews is still kicking about. So a lot of guys still get an opportunity. Um, and hopefully that will happen on the upcoming shows for Ross to go until Mania. But yeah, that's it for this episode. What did you think of going back to the older format? Or would you prefer it to be the one-on-one? As I say, more than likely it will just be this run to Mania. And then we will go back to monthly pay-per-views, but video every week. So thanks for watching, guys. The next episode will be SmackDown Live. I'm going to try and do two a week um, if time permits. Um, work has been extremely busy at this moment in time. And the impending release of NBA, which will be out by the time this is out. Same with FIFA, which will be out when this is out. And, yeah, all your big releases as well means TW Playtime does go down a little bit but as i say cheers for watching guys much appreciated any thumbs up subscriptions comments all that jazz always deeply appreciated we'll try and get back to you as much as possible whether it's in the comments section or if it says tweet to me i'll try and get back to you as well and yeah thanks for watching and keep supporting the community Bye bye